Todd Heinrich back with us. He is really Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's spokesperson. Todd, very good to have you. Uh, what do you make of this pressure? It's coming more, uh, you know, often and, and, and certainly more loudly from the White House. And now this apparent well, slight divide, certainly between those in the White House, some who, you know, back Israel nonstop, and others who say, well, maybe we should, we should step back and see what they're doing to civilians. You've heard it all, but that pressure alone, what do you think? Thank you for having me on, Neil, from Israel now. Um, uh, I've spoken to you many times from New York in the last weeks, and uh, now I'm here. It's a very difficult time for our country, a uh, very heavily charged atmosphere here, I can tell you. Uh, as for your question, there is, again, no daylight between Washington and Jerusalem in what pertains to the goals of this war. We all believe that Hamas must be eliminated. Israelis can no longer live next to a terrorist enclave. And once Hamas is eliminated, we don't want to see a resurgence of terror. Terrorism. Gaza can never pose a terror threat to Israelis again. Uh, we all want to see all hostages back in Israel, and we all want to see the minimal civilian suffering in Gaza and civilian casualties in Gaza as we operate. Now, I can tell you that as the IDF to move southwards to the next stage of this war, operating in the area of Khan Yunis, and we see the population there evacuating to these safer zones that the IDF has designated, we've seen uh, a decrease in the number of civilian casualties. This is the trend that we want to see. Every civilian casualty is obviously a huge loss. It's a tragedy. It should not have happened. But every civilian casualty, Israeli and Palestinian, is on Hamas. Let's just put it in perspective for a moment. If Hamas had not perpetrated the October 7th massacre, had they not uh, uh, stopped releasing hostages uh, as per the outline that was agreed upon, many of these people, all of these people would have still been alive today. There's no doubt about that, but I, there is a pylon, or what appears to be a pylon, Tala, and I, I was just sort of counting them this morning while I was getting ready for the show. Uh, who's been behind it? You, 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 you first of all, Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, who said that Israel has to lower the intensity in the Gaza. It's as simple as that. Anthony Blinken, the former, the, the, not the former, but his visit to Israel a, a couple of weeks ago, talked about making sure uh, that Israel is, is, is not over responding over reacting from the president himself divide about uh, protecting uh, average citizens and that they don't come in harm's way uh, as as any of this built to the point on top of now Kamala Harris saying that we, we, we've got to be looking after the, the fate of Palestinians as if to say that we've been paying too much attention to the fate of Israelis is that weighing on the government and is that lecturing about how to proceed affecting how the government operates now? Well, the way you're framing this, it's a question of proportionality. And proportionality during war, you know, uh, according to international law and according to, um, you know, the, the, the awareness, according to l logic, um, it's doing whatever it takes to achieve a legitimate military uh, goal. And, and the goal that we have defined after the October 7th massacre is more than legitimate. This is the most just war that one could imagine as other wars throughout history that also had civilian casualties. But uh, there is no stopwatch here. Really, Neil, uh, we will complete this mission because at the end of the day, Hamas must be gone. We don't want a Band-Aid solution here. No, Simply I, not. But I understand because then you that and I part, will just I'll, have this conversation again. Yeah, I apologize for jumping on you there. But uh, I'm just yeah. curious, if it ever came to the United States saying, you keep doing this, you keep, you know, ignoring what we're hinting at and, and telling you to do, uh, we, might, we might pull aid or not offer as much aid. Uh, it, it, it hasn't come to that. I understand that. I, I'm not making a mountain out of a molehill. But what would Israel's response be to something like that? I, I think you heard National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan when he was here, and, and Fox News also played some of the sound bites. He also gave uh, interviews to Israeli media outlets, by the way, to deliver this mes message to the Israeli public directly. And, and you really see that there's no daylight, uh, as I stated, between Jerusalem and Washington here. Um, we all want the same. We want Israelis to be secure. We want Palestinian civilians to uh, not, not, not to suffer to the extent possible because Hamas has dragged us into this war. As you know, nobody but Hamas wanted this war. Nobody but Hamas. And uh, that's why we are, we're operating in Gaza right now. But there is daylight 
right? I mean, so, you can't so, deny so the that Americans there's obviously daylight here. Now, obviously, you're the ones fighting the good fight. And I'm just wondering, on, a, on, a, on any level, uh, does this lecturing, and it, by the way, not just from the United States, you've heard it from mm -hmm. the UN, that's to be expected, and that's been virtually nonstop. But now from a lot of normal friends who are telling you, Israel, cool it, that, 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 that's daylight there. Well, you see, nor you say the the, the the phrase "normal friends," but the United States, you are our best friends. It's it's the White House. And we're this leading, and we're leading those we discussions. We're the ones saying it. We're the ones lecturing, right? So we take advice from friends, more so from okay. our best friends, of course. And I think that the American people, they really know that Israel is fighting the pure evil called Hamas right here. And they know how to tell right from wrong and good from evil. And you know what, Neil? If 40,000 Americans would have been murdered by bloodthirsty terrorists on the same, same day, uh, that's the equivalent of what had happened here. I would not want to live in a world that tried to tie America's hands. I would have been terrified to live in such a world. So you also brought up the United Nations. There is a, a built-in anti-Israel block at the United Nations. Uh, obviously, it's something that Israelis have been used to, and uh, we, we have zero expectations, so to say, from this international body. Uh, sitting at, at the UN headquarters in New York calling for a ceasefire, that's the easy thing to do. We don't want easy solutions, because what would a ceasefire mean? It means leaving Hamas in power, leaving the hostages in Gaza, and leaving the ones responsible for the October 7th massacre with the capability and the will Will to do it again and again and again, as they say. Tom, be safe. Very good having you on again. Tal Heinuk, uh, key spokesperson for Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.